What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to the Formula One racetrack. Look at this. We're on the racetrack in Monaco. They've already started putting the grandstands up pretty early, to be honest. Usually they do it a bit later and I don't know with COVID restrictions if they're going to be able to fill these out, but yeah, pretty cool to see them already up. We are in my Porsche Turbo, which is relevant because today we are going to be testing the brand new Ferrari Roma, which happens to be right behind me just as we speak. We are just going to a spot where we're going to be able to switch driving. But today, testing that Roma, and I've been waiting for this for a while because I've heard many, many good things about that car. And the reason I'm in my turbo is because, happy coincidence, it happens to be one of the biggest competitors of the new Ferrari Roma. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to hop straight from the driver's seat of my Turbo S into the driver's seat of the Roma to be able to compare directly the two cars. Now here's a whole new kind of uh, yeah, language both in terms of design but also driving experience for Ferrari that they've gone after with the Roma. So it's going to be completely new, completely different to my Ferrari 430 Spin Rear, of course. And I'm really excited to try it out. And of course, compare it to my Turbo. Right, here we are then. We've got the 991.2 Turbo S right here. Now, this isn't the direct competition of the Roma which is here, how beautiful. We've set it all nice and uh, pretty with the background for you guys. It isn't a direct competition because technically the 992 would be, but it's not far off. So I've literally just hopped out of this and we're gonna take a look at the Roma. Both cars are pretty stunning looking, but this is just beautiful. The class of this car, especially in this, this is TDF blue, gorgeous color, works really well with the silver rims and the silver brake calipers. This is a whole new direction for Ferrari, as I mentioned. It is a much more usable, it is a whole new kind of platform. Now it does share its uh, wheelbase with the Portofino, but apart from that, it is basically all new. 620 horsepower from a twin turbocharged 3.9 liter V8. And what a good looking car. So this is more in competition with let's say the Turbo, uh, maybe AMG GT, Aston Martin DB11, those kinds of cars. There've been a lot of people commenting about the look, saying that it is uh, you know, a bit like the Aston by Ferrari, but I think it has its own character, it has its own look, and uh, really classy, it kind of brings out that kind of classic Italian, um, you know, classic sports car. So I really, really like it. I love the way they've integrated these kind of old school looks, like the front grille right here. And it's got a little bit of uh, Monza, which is the, you know, multi-million pound hypercar, a single or double seater, no windscreen hypercar, in the lights and also in kind of the shape and the angle of this front grille. So really good looking from the front, I find. And from the rear, they've done a really good job with the lights. So the lights are this very kind of futuristic uh, 3D shape uh, lights in the back here, which really add a whole dynamic to the car. You've got the classic Ferrari quad exhausts. And yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to see kind of the, the direction, A, design wise of the X here, but also design wise of the interior because I think there's a lot in this car which is basically a hint as to what will be coming from Ferrari in the future. So yeah, it's kind of a, opening the door for a new wave of design. And I find it really exciting. So when you hop in, the first thing you notice is just how modern this interior is. You know, a lot of people who were saying that this was just a coupe Portofino, the interior completely shows that it is not. It is uh, completely different and they really reimagined the car uh, quite a bit. We thought there would maybe be the V6 hybrid in this car when they first announced it. A lot of people were speculating that, but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that. But it does so share that familiar V8 that you see in the lineup of Ferraris quite a bit. But the interior really shows, um, you know, the future design of the Ferrari range. It reminds me a lot of the SF90, which we previously did a video on. It has the exact same screen in front of you here, which you can control and have, you know, your sat nav, you can have all sorts of different things with these new uh, digital dashes. You can basically just control everything on there. You've got this big kind of iPad-like screen in the middle here, which is really nice, very intuitive system. And what I like is they've kind of designed this dual cockpit kind of aspect to it. So you've got this line which goes all the way around the driver and makes you really feel like you're in your cockpit, but then the same thing for the passenger. See, this line continues around here and it really gives you a feeling of being in your own space when you're the passenger. And the passengers can also have, this one doesn't have a spec, but a passenger display here. So you're really kind of in your standalone area, which is quite nice. Now this is a plus two, not a two plus two. You've got two very, very modest seats in the back, which again, 
is kind of like in my 911. They are a bit bigger in the 911, but Ferrari aren't trying to pretend like they're not. They know that they are very to short distance seats or even just storage. So that makes it pretty practical. And then you've got that aspect of, uh, you know, respecting and hinting towards Ferrari's past in the design, like we saw outside on the front with things such as the gear selector controller for the eight speed DCT gearbox. So you got buttons like automatic manual, reverse and launch control, all done in this makeshift kind of gated gearbox design very very nice very classy touch so it's very modern it's got all the latest technology but it doesn't feel um you know uncomfortable or too different it feels familiar still and they've just added a few things that we'll be seeing like for example this design right here i think will be coming throughout all the ferrari range in the very near future the dash i think that's something we'll be seeing a lot more this dual cockpit look i think this screen and just little details like buttons now instead of door handles on the interior. So you press a button to open and close the door, and I think that will be coming through on a lot of Ferraris. Everything you touch also is touchscreen, basically. So even the buttons for the light, everything is all touchscreen. But what I really want to know is how this thing drives and how it compares to my Turbo S. Right, you hop in, and even the engine start button... Oh, hello. Uh, even that is touchscreen. So you've still got the traditional indicators on the steering wheel, but they've changed this actually where you can see, you can do it from behind as well. Um, so you can just hit down like that and then hit back up to cancel it. So that's quite nice. All right, we're going to start a comfort mode and automatic because I want to see what that's like. So you hit the right paddle to go into first gear and if there's no one coming, off we go. So you've got a bit more noise already, just even in normal mode from the get-go than you do in the 911. That you can notice straight away, right? Let's put the air conditioning on. It's a very usable interface, I feel. Right, so we're in automatic. Changes up to third gear at under 40 kilometers an hour. Suspension is, I've just driven it for a little bit right now, but suspension is uh, pretty compliant, more so than in the 911. It's one of the downfalls of the 911 is the suspension is always fairly stiff and then in a sports plus mode it's like a skateboard but even in the normal mode in the 911 the suspension is 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 pretty stiff so you come down here to this very cool uh gear selector area that we talked about before which uh it looks very cool go into manual mode whacked into sport on the manatino which is still a physical switch with um kind of digital uh colors around it but it is a physical switch which is quite nice and then you can feel the 620 horsepower. Oh God, it's brutal. It is brutal. Not 60 in 3.2 seconds in this, which is slower than the Turbo S, which is 2.8. But the Turbo S with the four wheel drive just pins it and is one of the fastest accelerating cars yeah, in the world. So that is particularly impressive, but you do not need any more power than this. 620 horsepower, which is 20 more than there was in the Portofino. And you can feel, even though the engine, so the engine's in the front, but let's go into race mode and you'll see what I'm talking about a bit more. But the engine is in the front, they bring it all the way in the center to try and have almost a central driving position. But the rear feels pretty light when you put your foot down, look. See, a little bit of slip as soon as you put your foot down and just coming out of corners when you're in race mode where it obviously lightens the effects of the traction control on the car stiffens everything up so now all of a sudden that compliance suspension is a little bit higher uh, harder and the gearbox is a... so when you come out of a corner you can definitely feel the rear end getting a little bit light and a little bit swirmy but the grip around the front end is pretty impressive for a gt car i mean it's nothing you can compare to the more hardcore mid-engine ferraris but for a car that in automatic um, and you know, uh, normal mode can just crunch miles. It is pretty impressive, very impressive in fact. I mean, the fact that this like type of car, the Turbo S, the Vantages, but especially this and the Turbo S, I would say, how they can switch characters and have such a broad uh, reach of abilities is unbelievable. Now, the visibility is very good in this car. You've got these big rear, uh, rear view mirrors, um, side view mirrors, rear view mirrors, side view mirrors, completely forgot it. Right, one last proper acceleration. Mm -hmm. 
Certain people prefer having a much more open cockpit, and if that's the case, uh, this isn't the car for you. But I personally think it's really cool the way every, each person has their own personal space and the way it kind of makes you feel a part of the car. Um, now, it does feel slightly less bright and slightly smaller in here than in an 911, but I mean, what an interior. So modern, this dash in front of you is so cool. And again, with the yellow rev counter, it's managed to kind of keep that character. I just think they've walked that line so, so well on keeping the character of the car whilst being, you know, super modern. The steering is very light when you're in the normal modes. Um, but again, that's that GT side. They're trying to make the car basically as usable as can be. The noise, now it's as good as it's gonna get really with all these new filters and twin turbo. Um, but yeah, I think they've done a very, very good job with that. The brake feel is fantastic. Very instant, instantaneous brakes um, and pretty, uh, yeah, you have to get used to them. When you get into it, it can kind of take you by surprise at first because they kind of just grip on all of a sudden, but the feel is great. Um, you know, the throttle response in race mode is fantastic. And the steering feel um, for, again, these new modern steering racks uh, is, yeah, is very good for a GT car. Overall, I think it's, oh, you've got start stop coming in there just as you're going over a speed bump. No lift on this one, I believe, but it's pretty high, so you don't really need to worry about it that much. You could easily daily drive this car. Yeah, no, this is very, very impressive. I feel so lucky to be able to test these these uh, these new cars like this, and especially a new Ferrari. There's something so particular to it. Now, basically, the turbos uh, and this, I think, for me at least, uh, are slightly above the rest of the competition. The DB11, the Vantage, the AMG GT. Um, I would put the, this and the Turbo S basically uh, on par. And, as far as I'm concerned. And then I think it just basically, ooh, see what I mean about the brakes? You have to get used to them. But yeah, I think it just basically comes down to personal taste. Do you want a Ferrari? Do you want a Porsche? You know, is Porsche more discreet? Do you want something uh, a little bit louder potentially? Um, do you prefer this interior, that interior? Uh, do you prefer the V8 or the sound of the flat six? It just comes down to personal taste. Both cars are, yeah, very, very hard to floor. Um, so yeah, for, you know, kind of coming into a new segment with a new model. Ferrari have done an unbelievable job and I'm just so lucky. I mean, who am I really to comment? I just think the car is so cool and um, and I just feel so lucky to be able to drive it and it has lived up to exactly kind of what I would hoped it would be. So fantastic. I mean, obviously you have to look at this with open eyes. You know, I'm not going to compare it to my 430 Scuderia because it has nothing to do with that. And, you know, Ferrari weren't trying to make a car which in any way kind of related to that. So. Uh, it's obviously, you know, much more kind of filtered than other uh, Ferraris and that you could, you know, hope that a Ferrari would be sometimes. But most of the people who will be driving this will be driving around in normal mode around town and occasionally will come and have a blast on the road like we just did. So for that is pretty spot on. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Huge thank you to Scuderia Ferrari uh, Monaco, Scuderia Monte Carlo, of course, for lending me the car. Um, yeah, just a massive honor to be able to do this. A huge thank you to them. Huge thank you to you guys for obviously supporting the channel and allowing us to do this. And we'll be back with plenty more videos very, very soon. Please comment down below which car you would take as well. I'm really interested to see here. So I'll see you soon, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>